Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today we're doing part three of Dataflow Basics, how to create roll-up summaries on virtually any relationship. So for these examples, I'm going to be rolling up values on opportunity to account, and uh, it's probably the silliest combination of objects that I could pick, but I've selected them because they're using Trailhead data, and anybody who's watching can follow along pretty easily. Why are they a bad selection? Well, you can already create roll-up summaries on opportunity to account. Uh, you can also achieve all the different examples that we're going to get through a simple compare table that would not require you to edit the data flow at all. But maybe you're not allowed to create new fields. Maybe you've hit your roll-up summary cap. Maybe this is external data. Maybe you're creating a summary data set. Uh, we're going to create a data set that has one row per account. Uh, so there's, there are use cases for why you're going to need to do this. It will come up from time to time. And you can also create my nemesis, the multi-value field. So we are going to augment our opportunities onto our account. But before we do that, I want to get some additional things that we can put on here. So I'm going to do a compute expression. I'm going to call it enrich opties. I'm going to set my source to get opti. I'm going to set merge with source to true. That's going to, to add these as additional columns to the source. So I'll get everything that I already had on get opties, and I'm adding new fields to that. There are use cases where you would want merge with source unchecked. Now I'm going to add a computed field. And first I'm going to call it power of one. It's of type numeric. And my SACFL expression is just the value one. This is going to tag every row of opportunity to data with a one, so that when I roll it up to my account, I'll be able to get counts. Save it, add another field. I'm going to call this one. And now we could use the is one field, but I want to show you another uh, example of uh, different SQL expressions that we can do. So I'm going to use a case statement. This is something you're going to do a lot of. It's very commonly used. Um, if else, if else, if else kind of thing. Um, the syntax is very easy to follow. So, so when a thing is a thing, then do a thing. Otherwise, if it's a different thing, then do a different thing. And if it's none of those things, do something else. That's the basic syntax of the case statement. We can have as many when then combos as we want. In our case, uh, I'm only going to be using one. So what this is going to do is if uh, we have the word one in the stage name, it's going to return a one. Otherwise, it's going to give us a zero. And yes, it does need to be a numerical field. So the matches function, if you haven't guessed by now, it's similar to uh, like. It basically means contain. So now um, I'm going to do another really common formula, expected revenue. We're going to make this one numeric, and it's going to be amount of time probability scale and precision so that should be enough for us to move on so let's move this around a little bit get some room and we're going to add the augment that is going to roll up opportunity data onto account there we go that looks like enough room we're going to create our augment join opti to account Left source is going to be get accounts because we want our base grain to be one row per account. We're going to choose the accounts ID field for our left key. Our relationship is going to be called roll up opti. Our right source is going to be the enriched opties that we've just created. Our right key is going to be the account ID. And for right fields, we're going to grab amount, expected revenue, power one, probability, and for a demonstration of multi-value, stage name. Now we do need to set the operation from lookup single value, which is default, to lookup multiple values. This is essential for this to work. Now we're going to go ahead and click Save and move this to where it makes a little bit more sense. And then we're going to go ahead and register it. Source node is join opties to account. Skip the uh, sharing source and security predicate. Go ahead and hit save. And then we'll just jam this guy in here too. Get comfy. Now we're just going to update our data flow. Morning, your data flow. Da, 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 da. 
So now that I've corrected all the various data flow errors that I was showing in the captions, uh, we're going to look at some suggested reading for you guys. All of uh, the links to this are posted in the, the uh, description below. Uh, first, take a look at the documentation on the augment transformation. Read it thoroughly. It's going to help you understand this a lot. It, and then check out at the bottom, there's a link that says special cases for matching records with augment transformation. When you take a look at that, that's going to give you uh, a breakdown of various things like, you know, null keys, non-uniques, empty keys, uh, no match, multi-match. And multi-match is really the one that we're concerned with for this use case. It's going to tell us how the numbers get rolled up and uh, how uh, my nemesis, the multi-value field, is actually created. And uh, while we're on the topic of that, um, I'm going to just bash on the multi-value field a little bit here. Uh, so check out this knowledge article that's going to tell you not only how uh, to generate multi-value fields, but then it's going to give you the wonderful list of restrictions and recommendations. And I'm just going to read this quote right down here. We do not recommend relying on multi-value fields for necessary data operations. If grouping is needed, duplicating the field as multi-value for grouping and as single value for all other functions may be optimal. Uh, and last but not least, multi-value dimensions uh, and what they don't do in SQL projections. So I guess what I'm saying is uh, user discretion advised. Um, make sure that you understand that these are not necessarily going to be the magic bullet you want them to be. They can be very powerful if you use them uh, well. Uh, so make sure to read these docs. Uh, again, links in the description. Another thing to watch out for when using this sort of roll-up is that you can inadvertently create skewed results that are going to give you inaccurate data. So if I was to group by industry and set my aggregation to any average, so for example, the average uh, expected revenue, uh, this is going to be skewed by the fact that I've already boiled it up at the account level. So if I was saying, you know, what is the average expected revenue per opportunity by industry, uh, I'm not taking into consideration how... Uh, accounts that have more or less are going to count more considerably toward that average. So effectively, you are now averaging an average. There are some angles where maybe that is how you want to have weighted calculations, but just be aware that it is going to create that skew. Now, the last thing that we're going to show tonight is some of the behavior when we have multi-value fields in dimensions that we've created as a result of these augments. So first, we're going to group by our account name, and then we're going to add a secondary group of roll-up opti stage name and switch that to a stacked bar. So now, um, my outer grouping is one row per account, but we can see that, for example, Anderson 638, they've got closed lost, they've got closed one, and they've also got perception analysis. So that means we're effectively seeing uh, almost a duplication behavior where in the within the grouping, well, this, this has all three of those values. So it counts towards all three of those groupings. For example, if I, if I have values A, AB, and ABC, and I group by it, I would have three A's, two B's, and one C. The docs do say that grouping is an excellent usage of the multi-value field as long as it's separate and kind of does its, you know, its, its thing over there. Um, be careful with how you interact with these. Again, if you do understand how they work, they can be very powerful, but this is just a quick uh, review of how they're going to behave when you create them through a roll-up augment. So that concludes this chapter of Dataflow Basics. Uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please, uh, you know, like, subscribe, tell a friend, give me suggestions, and as always, thanks for watching.